Henry, Sam and I have been enjoying a wonderful evening with Jacob Rees-Mogg, who is here to argue the Brexit cause. Um, Jacob, how are you? I'm very well, thank you, and it's been a great pleasure being here to talk today about Brexit. Thank you. We thoroughly enjoyed your talk, um, and we just had a few questions we wanted to ask. Um, One of your key points was on the European Commission and the fact that it is undemocratic, um, and as was explored in the talk, I just wanted to look at your position on the House of Lords, which you don't advocate reform or abolishing. Uh, No, the House of Lords is not democratic, but the House of Commons is. Uh, it's been very difficult to work out what reform should be made of the House of Lords. In in principle, I think it would be a good idea to reform it. I think it's very hard to justify a patronage house as it's currently constructed, except to say that it does a very respectable job uh, of um, reviewing legislation uh, that is passed by the Commons and has a majority in the Commons, but the Lords looks through the details. Um, The question of reform is how do you do something that doesn't replicate the commons, compete with the commons, or lead to gridlock? And if you can answer those three questions, then you can come up with a reform. But you need to do that first. Just looking at the European Commission, um, the United Kingdom has the ability to nominate two commissioners, I believe. We have one at the minute... Um, who David Cameron nominated Jonathan Hill. This is a similar system seen in the US with um, secretaries of state uh, nominated by the um, leaders of the country. Um, I was wondering, is this just not a good thing because the body allows experts to be um, nominated to be in it? I see what you mean, but I don't agree with you at all. Uh, it's, it's only one. It got reduced from two in, uh, one, okay. of, in one of the treaties, I think, prior to Lisbon. In the US, the president appoints the cabinet, which is then subject to ratification by the Senate. So that's very different from one country appointing a representative who then specifically swears an oath to the European Union and that he will put its interests first, not those of the country that sends him. So no, I don't feel that gives any democratic mandate or uh, oversight to the commission. If you could just give one reason for undecided people uh, why they should vote to leave the EU, obviously you've got a plethora of reasons, I expect. Uh, What would you advise? Obviously, bearing in mind there's people from different sides of the spectrum, people on the right are perhaps more concerned with immigration, arguably. If you could give one sort of unifying point as to why you think undecided should vote for Brexit. But one point is people have to decide whether their country is Europe, in which case they should vote to remain, or is their country the United Kingdom, in which case they should vote to leave. If they believe it's the United Kingdom, they will restore their democratic control of their lives, the effectiveness of their representatives determining their laws, and also increase their chances of prosperity, because prosperity is dependent on your constitutional systems. Um, You suggested that David Cameron's renegotiation of terms was a waste of time. Um, Would you... Um, consider supporting a reformed European Union and do you think that David Cameron was a weak representative for the United Kingdom? I said in the House of Commons to David Cameron himself that I thought it was thin gruel so I I haven't said anything today that will come as any great surprise to anybody. Uh, I think the difficulty for the Prime Minister is that the EU didn't realise how much it needs to reform. In his Bloomberg speech in 2013 he set out to have fundamental reform of the EU, not just bits and pieces for the UK, and he then met with a brick wall. And I think that is not his fault. I think that shows the stubbornness of the European elite, who think the answer to all their problems is more Europe, when all that they've done so far, as I was mentioning in my talk, agriculture, fish, the euro, immigration, has failed, and more Europe is not the answer. So no, I don't think it was his weakness so much as the folly of the European elite. So just to confirm that, so if Nigel Farage went in there with, I don't know, a pint of beer in one hand rather than David Cameron trying to get a better deal for Britain, do you think it's because the Commission's so stubborn he wouldn't have been able to get anything more? I think it would have been very hard to get more than um, was given because nothing was given which showed that their intention not to give anything. As it happens, had we been able to have a fundamental renegotiation, I would have been uh, in favour of that. 
And just finally, on being an MP, uh, you've you stood for Parliament twice before you were elected. I think once in Scotland and once in Shropshire, uh, and you were unsuccessful both times. So, what what sort of advice would you give to people aspiring to go into politics who maybe not guaranteed to, to succeed first time round? Who may be at Warwick University uh, be- uh, and very interested in radio. Um, <laughs> uh, 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 what my my advice is that they're clearly such brilliant people that they'll get selected straight away. Uh, but <laughs> in the almost inconceivable event this doesn't happen. Just keep going. Just apply again and again. If you want to be a Member of Parliament, you can become a Member of Parliament, uh, but you mustn't mind if you fall at hurdles. You've just got to keep ploughing on. An argument I often hear is that um, people who are in favour of remaining in the EU argue that it's a great force for peace. How would you uh, respond to this? All the dash. Um, NATO is a great force for peace and kept the peace in the Cold War and still has the... Um, agreement, the um, Article 5 agreement, that we will come to the aid of any country that is invaded. That is what deterred the Soviet Union from uh, invading during the Cold War and continues to hold back President Putin now. It isn't the European Union where a number of member states are are neutral uh, and wouldn't be involved in protecting peace anyway. And the openness of the borders uh, has been a contributory factor to some of the problems that have recently occurred on the European continent. And very lastly for me, uh, are you assured that the Conservative Party can recover from this dichotomy that's blatantly split it? Oh, the Conservative Party has recovered from everything eventually, yes, and it will recover from this too. Uh, My name is Jacob Rees-Mogg and you're listening to Raw. When it comes to playing football in Europe, UEFA is 57 countries, not the 27 of the EU. When it comes to the Eurovision Song Contest, it's 52 countries, including Israel and Australia, which stretches the boundaries of uh, Europe quite a a distance. 